about the way that you think? Have you ever wondered about the way you came to a conclusion? Or how two different people could come to the same conclusion, but how they found it in two very different ways? Did you ever think that someone diagnosed with autism, someone that was considered to be a social outcast, could solve complex or even everyday simple problems better than you? If you have ever heard of Temple Grandin, then you know that the answer to this question would be yes, they can. Temple Grandin was born August 29, 1947 in Boston, Massachusetts. She was diagnosed at age three with autism. Luckily for Temple, she had a very involved mother who was very proactive at finding help for her daughter. Uh, Temple was considered to have high functioning autism and she was integrated in regular schools until high school where she was actually transferred to a boarding school that was for gifted students. Temple struggled with the other students in the school. They teased her a lot and called her names like tape recorder because she repeated things often. Uh, she didn't really want friends, uh, so she didn't really have that many, but it was because socializing to her was awkward and she actually thought that it was really boring. Uh, one summer, she went to live with her aunt and uncle on their ranch where she actually uh, found her lifelong passion, which was for animals. More so, it was for cows. She was fascinated by the cows that she found uh, at her aunt's house. She felt that she could relate with them because they were visual thinkers like her. They saw the world how she did, which was in pictures. Temple went on to get her bachelor's degree in uh, psychology, but then eventually decided to change her mind and go towards animal science and livestock. She got her master's in animal science and eventually even got her doctorate. Temple revamped the livestock and uh, slaughter industry by her research on cows. People thought she was crazy because during her internship she would be out in the middle of the pasture with the cows with a pen and pencil writing about their different moves and things like that, but it's because she was sensitive to those issues. She was very sensitive to sounds, and she could hear that one cow's moo was louder than the other cow's moo, and she wondered why. She was like, why are their moos so different? They're, and people were like, it's a moo. I, I would say it's a moo. They all sound the same. She also saw how they moved. She saw that they moved in patterns. They moved in curves and in circles and um, she saw how, what surroundings they reacted to. Um, she actually came up with a completely new system for livestock and slaughterhouses that was actually safer means for the cattle and actually better business and more efficient. Um, Temple actually contributes all of her success to her brains and how she thinks. She says that she thinks differently and that she thinks in pictures. For example, when you say the word shoes, all of a sudden pictures of shoes pop into her head. Every shoe she's ever seen in her life, a tennis shoe or a high heel, or it's kind of like your own personal slideshow in your brain. Um, she's, what she's worried about is that high functioning autistic children like herself are not being taught how they should in classrooms today because they think differently. Maybe they think in pictures like her. For her, thinking was in pictures. For some people, it could be words. For others, it could be music. But the important thing is that we learn how to reform how we educate these students so that they can reach their full potential. You never know they could be the next Einstein. Did you know that if Einstein was in our society today, he would be probably diagnosed autistic because he was very socially awkward, um, but he was a genius. So is Temple though. Look at everything that she's accomplished and if she did not think in the way she did, our livestock and slaughter industry would be losing money daily instead of being more efficient. 
She also speaks on the importance of mentors for these students. She found her mentor, Dr. Carlock, while she was at her boarding high school. He was her science teacher, and he saw how she thought. He saw that she was a visual learner, and so what he did is he used that to guide her learning, um, while everybody else just wanted to throw her off on somebody else. Say, for instance, if you have a student that's constantly fixated on trains, you should try to use trains in your learning or in your teaching methods. Maybe trains are the key to getting them to learn. She's also not advocating that all autistic children are going to be the next Einstein. She understands that you know autism is a it falls under you know the autism umbrella. It's a huge spectrum where there's many forms of this disability where many are more severe than others. What she is advocating is for high-functioning autistic children like her who may just need a little guidance or help opening the doors to education. Temple is actually an author. She is an autism advocate. She is a doctor of animal science, and she's actually a professor at Colorado State University now. There is actually even a movie out, uh, HBO just put it out, it's called Temple Grandin, and I highly recommend y'all watching it. It's a great video, and it, it really shows how she thinks and how she solves problems and how, um, what was best, um, how she was working with. But what she says is that the world needs all types of thinkers. They need thinkers like her, visual, they need thinkers like me, and they need thinkers like everybody in this room. Everyone's different and thinks differently, but knowledge is power, and the world needs all different minds to thrive. That's it.